Hey guys, it's Becky with Design Bundles and we are back today with another great tutorial in Silhouette Studio. You know I love Silhouette Studio and today we're talking about the nest feature, nesting, which is a feature of the Designer Edition and Higher, but don't worry. Uh, this is a great video to kind of dip your toes in the water, see if you're interested in upgrading, or if you've already upgraded, you can see that this is one of the great features that is definitely underutilized, all right? But you've unlocked it, you have paid for it, and darn it, we are going to use it today. So we have a lot of practical uses, plus a few designing tips. So let's go ahead and jump on in and get started. All right, guys, here we are in Silhouette Studio. Now remember that the nesting is gonna be a feature of designer edition or higher. So if you have not upgraded your software, that is a-okay, you're still welcome to join us. And that'll give you a good idea of if the nesting tool is something that you would use enough or use in conjunction with other tools in order to justify upgrading your software. So I am gonna show you just the very basics of nesting. The nesting panel is located down here on the bottom right hand side. To me, it looks like two hand holding, okay? That is the nesting panel. If you have problems finding the icon, you can also go to panels and nest, okay? And they both lead you to the same place. Now, I'm gonna draw some quick circles. Now, just imagine that you decide that you are making a project with polka dots. You want to fill this page with polka dots to your little heart's content. All right. Now you can do that by duplicating um, the circles within the page itself. Okay. But say I don't want to go to all that trouble. Here's what I'm going to do I'm going to open the nesting panel. I'm going to make all these circles. I will select these circles. And then my sweet spot seems to be a padding of five. Now the rotations don't matter on a circle because obviously if you rotate it one direction or the other, it's still a circle, okay? So these turn out really well, just hit nest. And you'll see that you have this blue border around your page. That is your cut area. You lose a little bit at the bottom because I don't have a mat turned on, but that's okay. But what it does is it takes to the best of the software's ability and it nests all those circles in there for you. Now, you may be saying that's not really what I had in mind. That's okay. It doesn't have to be, you know, that you know you want this for a project. It's just important for you to understand um, what nesting is and what it's good for. But don't worry, I do have two other projects that I'm ready to show you. Now these projects, I've already prepared them a little bit. Now this one in particular is a heart and I'm going to fill it with other hearts. So consider this nesting 2.0, okay? I, instead of using the cut area, I have selected to set shape, uh, set selected shape as a boundary. Okay, now you see I've still got my padding at five. I set my rotations to eight. Okay, and again, that seems to be a little sweet spot for me. So I'm going to select all these hearts here, and then I'm just going to click nest. Now, don't be alarmed if it takes a little bit for your nesting to happen. Nesting seems to be very taxing on the software and on your computer requirements. And as a matter of fact, if I'm too demanding on the nesting feature, um, even on my computer, it will shut down my software. So just to let you know, that is a thing that happens. Okay, so you see I have all these hearts in here, right? Now, that's a cute design all on its own. I'm not saying that it's not. But another thing that you can do, this is the same shape as our original heart. I'm going to do a small offset. That's just the 0.125. And then I'm going to center the offset and see how it hugs around all those other hearts. Now, if I select all of these, I'm going to right click and choose make a compound path. And let's see what happens when we fill it in. So it's not only just for, you know, making the original shapes, but, you know, this is a pretty cute little project. So um, whether you do it with the offset or not with the offset, it's completely up to you. I'm going to back up a few steps. I think I like it better without the offset. So I'm going to delete that. Select these again and let's fill them in. I'm going to fill them in with this pretty pink here. 
There we go. And of course, we want to group them together. So, I mean, I don't know how you feel about that, but I feel like that's a pretty practical use of the nesting feature. Okay, now I have one more project for you. And this one, you can see hands on created a duplicate of my N. Now you'll see I have a couple different words, a couple different fonts. I have some hearts and some circles. Let's turn that outline transparent just for the sake of it. Now I could even fill these with different colors if I want. There is one more thing I'm going to do. I have not welded these. I did um, convert to path and that seemed to help too. Remember how we were talking about it being taxing on the software? Once I converted to path, um, the, the software seemed to like it a little bit better. All right, so I'm going to use my drag box. I'm gonna select all my shapes and let's open that nesting window back up. I'm still going to keep the padding of five and the rotations of eight. If you haven't guessed yet, the padding is the space in between your shapes, words, characters, whatever you're nesting. And the rotations is the number of times that the software can rotate your design individually. It doesn't mean that it will rotate it, but it means that it can rotate it. So you're kind of giving it a maximum. Okay, so I'm going to choose nest. And what I like about this, so these are the shapes that um, didn't need or didn't have room for, okay? And it gives me this nice little word art here. Now, if I decide that that's not what I had in mind, I can undo. And as a matter of fact, it's looking a little slim. So I'm going to create some more hearts and some more circles. Now, if I choose nest, Let's see if it fills out a little bit more of that design. There we go. So now you can see there's still just a little bit of room here. I can choose to fill that with hearts if I want to. Um, not hearts, but circles. And I think I will. I like for my designs to look complete. There we go. Now it is all filled in. And um, let's close the nesting panel. Now, zoom back in. You can see that it does butt up right against the edge of the letter here. So that's where that offset comes in handy sometimes. And I can either leave this without the N. I mean, in, the N is a pretty good shape and obviously it's holding its, uh, its appearance. I can look at that and I can tell that it's an N. Um, but again, just like we did with the other one, we can, let's center that. We can select this whole thing right click and choose make a compound path and we get another look for it. Okay, so completely up to you, whichever way you decide to go with it. Um, I just wanted to give you those two separate options. And, you know, of course, I really hope that you have learned a lot from watching the nesting tutorial and that you will, um, you know, be able to do a lot with it going forward in the future. So, so nesting, I mean, it's definitely a tool that not a lot of people talk about and it has uh, features and functions that you wouldn't even really imagine that that's what they could be used for. So um, I'm really happy with our nesting tutorial. Hopefully if you have any questions or comments, you will leave them below because I love to come back and answer questions. And naturally you have to subscribe to the channel because we always have tutorials for you right around the corner and we want to bring you the knowledge to get the most out of your software. So thanks for joining me today, guys. I really appreciate it. And we will see you next time.